Hey guys, this is just a quick content warning. Just to let you know that this video contains a brief discussion on sexual assault. It doesn't go into any specific details of any cases or anything like that, but just be aware that it is there. It was the 2nd of July 2017. I was sat in my bedroom watching Despicable Me 2, because the third movie was out and I was going to see it with a friend the next day. As I was watching the movie, my mind started to drift, and I started scrolling through Twitter and Facebook, and while there, I found a link to an article of asexual people sharing their experiences. As I was reading it, occasionally flicking back over to the movie, I started to realise, hey, a lot of this sounds kind of right. I've experienced a lot of these things. And that's when it clicked. I'm asexual. So, for the rest of my life, I will have to deal with the fact that my sexual identity is forever tied to the minions. I am asexual. I do not experience sexual attraction towards other people. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it's a good place to start, I think. Asexuality is a sexual identity, just like gay, straight, bisexual, etc. There's a lot encompassed in that etc. I was 25 years old when I realised this about myself, which is pretty late I guess, but I simply didn't know any better. I spent so much time believing I was straight, basically by default. It's kind of an unspoken understanding. Straight until proven fabulous. And when there's not an awful lot of information out there about your sexuality, like you barely knew it existed, then it could be kind of difficult to figure out that that's what you are. For years, I thought that there was something wrong with me, that I was kind of broken. And I wasn't, I simply didn't know any better. Which brings me to something of a problem. People aren't out there talking about asexuality the way that they are about the other L's, G's, B's, T's, and filthy, filthy Q's. Which can make it pretty difficult to figure yourself out, you know? As such, I'd very much appreciate a greater amount of information being out there in general, so that's what I intend to do with this video. Put that information out there, as something of a resource, for people like me two years ago who could need it. I feel like you must have so much more free time because you're not thinking about sex. Are you literally thinking about sex all the time? I mean, don't you have any other hobbies? Maybe you haven't met the right person yet. So, when a lot of people talk about sexuality, they tend to think that it fits into a few specific categories. Imagine points on a line. You have straight over here, gay over here, and bi in the middle. You are one of these three points, and that's that. But that's nonsense. Just plain nonsense. This is the Kinsey Scale. It was created in 1948 by Dr. Alfred Kinsey and his team of researchers to categorize sexuality. It goes from 0 to 6, with 0 being completely heterosexual and 6 being completely homosexual, three in the middle as bisexual, attracted to both men and women equally, and then the other points in between kind of skewing whichever way they go. This was one of the first major studies to suggest that things maybe weren't as black and white as we've been told. Like, not every bisexual person is equally attracted to men and women, and it can be useful to have a scale to tell you exactly where you lie within that, but it's still pretty limited overall. The actual spectrum is much broader than this, not just six points. Okay, now that's more like it. Everything is big and wide and weird, and every place that you could fit onto on this spectrum is 100% valid, and also, very definitely, cool. You can also move around from one point to another throughout your life, and that's totally normal. There are also spectrums that apply to other things. There's the gender spectrum, which is absolutely real, and screw anyone who says it isn't. The gender expression spectrum, which is different to the gender spectrum, and obviously what is most relevant to us here, an asexuality spectrum. I'm just worried that you'll be lonely. I... 
I get what you're trying to say, but please just... I'm fine. Maybe you haven't met the right person yet. The asexual spectrum is generally characterized by three major points. These being asexuality, sexuality, and grey slash demisexuality. Asexuality here refers to anyone who feels no sexual feelings whatsoever. Sexuality refers to people who feel sexual feelings on the regs, aka allosexuals. And grey slash demi refers to people who feel sexual attraction sometimes. There is further distinction between grey and demi, with grey being people who occasionally feel sexual attraction, and demi being people who only feel sexual attraction towards specific individuals that they have developed a strong emotional connection to. But for the purposes of this diagram, they are close enough together. So of course, you could go anywhere up and down this, depending on the level of sexual attraction that you feel. But there's a couple of other layers to this. One is what kind of sexual attraction you're not feeling. Because not everyone is not attracted to the same gender, if you understand what I'm saying. You can be gay or bi or pan and still be asexual. The other is your level of romantic attraction, because you could be completely asexual but still be romantically attracted to people. You could be heteroromantic, homoromantic, biromantic, panromantic, or if you don't feel any romantic attraction to people at all, aromantic. And this romantic attraction level also applies to the regular sexual spectrum as well, because nothing is ever too detailed. So rather than being just a straight line with a few fixed points, sexuality is actually more like a scattergraph with three axes or, in fact, several different scattergraphs for several different things. Being able to put a label on yourself can be a really useful thing if you're unsure about where exactly you fit in the world, and having a spectrum can help us simply to refine that even further. I guess ace means anything less than a normal sex drive? Nope, that's, uh, that's, that's not what being ace is at all. Sex drive and sexual orientation aren't the same thing. Think of it like being hungry, but not being hungry for any food in particular. Maybe you haven't met the right person yet. When you're part of a smaller group of people, it's pretty common to have symbols so that you can recognize each other and be proud of yourselves, and asexuals are no different. The obvious one is this beautiful flag. Created as recently as 2010 by Stand Up, a member of the Asexuality Visibility and Education Network, this was made because there wasn't really a common symbol tying asexual people together. It was pitched around and people liked it, and eventually it became the official symbol of asexuals. And personally, I love it. Also, just as an aside, one of the designs pitched in that thread looked like this. What can I say but yikes? Each of the colours is representative of a different element. The black stripe is representative of asexuality, the grey stripe of grey and demisexuality, the white stripe of non-asexual partners and allies, and the purple stripe community. Its simple design and clear meaning has helped it to become immediately representative. Another symbol of the community is the black ring. There's no specific design for it, it just needs to be a black ring worn in the middle finger of your right hand but not on any of the other fingers, because that's how you identify yourself as a swinger. Which is kind of the opposite of what I'm going for, to be honest. The purpose that the ring serves is simple. It's just to say, you are not alone. You are part of a community. We are out here and we understand what you're going through. Not everyone chooses to wear one, and I get that, but personally I quite like it as an identifier. Plus it's stylish to boot. And now that we have an understanding of what asexuality is and how we identify ourselves, let's look at some of the problems that we face. Okay, so this is just a quick editor's note from the future to say that what you're about to hear, the question that I'm about to be asked, is absolutely 100% a real thing that someone did actually ask me when I told them that I'm asexual. Also, yes, I know that the ace flag is home crooked and that my tie looks like garbage. Don't at me. So, do you masturbate? That's, um, that's a bit of a personal... Would you ask your straight friends this? I mean, yes. But... Maybe you haven't met the right person yet. So 
So, I want to talk to you about an article I read recently in The Guardian, largely in response to Budweiser's campaign of LGBT glasses for Pride. Nine glasses emblazoned with the colours of various LGBT flags. Armour Madawi, the author of the article, rightly lambasts Budweiser and the many other companies who like to abuse your sexual identity to try and exploit you out of your hard-earned cash by slapping a rainbow on their merch. Should probably also point out that Budweiser is sponsoring the World Cup in Russia, whose despicable track record of LGBT rights violations I hardly need to tell you. But I'm getting off track. The article specifically responds to the Asexual Cup, which Budweiser announced by listing what the different colours mean. Awa has some thoughts. Well, let's just stop there for a second so that I can shake my homosexual head in confusion. This incredibly specific colour-coded categorisation seems to dilute the whole point of Pride. Perhaps, though, I am being cynical. Perhaps I am overlooking the widespread persecution of demi-asexuals and grey asexuals in society. Perhaps, having been validated by a multinational beer brand, an oppressed grey asexual will now be able to hold hands with another grey asexual on the street without worrying about being called a graggot, grike, or whatever slur it is that people use against grey asexuals. So, I know that her point is to talk about how capitalism related to pride is bad, and capitalism in general, pass it on. But here's the thing. Budweiser were correct when they said what each of the colours represented. So, would it have killed you to Google something about asexual people before writing your article for a national newspaper? Instead of just kind of saying whatever and assuming that grey ace people don't exist? This is a common problem in LGBT spaces. People keep trying to exclude other parts of it. Ace people get this a lot because a bunch of people just seem to think that we kind of don't exist. We exist. The exclusion of ace people from the community tends to take the form of assuming that we are straight people with low sex drives or that we're just making it up for attention. This is, of course, not true, and it really does a disservice to gay, bi, and pan aces. Now, it should go without saying that this is only a percentage of the community. Speaking personally, all the LGBT people I know are not like this. But it doesn't take away from how much it sucks to have the people who are meant to understand what you're going through telling you that you don't exist. Now, this kind of thing extends far beyond ace people. I mean, what we have to deal with is nowhere near as bad as the plight of trans people. No one's trying to take away my rights. And by bringing this up, I'm not trying to push our problem ahead of theirs. I just think we need to acknowledge that this is something happening so that we can make this community a safer, more welcoming place where we can all exist together and help each other. That said, there is one form of help that we really don't want. Yeah, well, I'm bisexual. Um, that's not a thing. Maybe you haven't met the right person yet. <sighs> So, a lot of people view sexuality as just a natural thing for every person, and when an asexual comes along and challenges that, they can get kind of irrational. There's a need to try and make sense of us. Surely we're just choosing this, so why don't we just try having sex one time, and then we'll know if we like it or not. Because I'm sure that you needed to try having sex before you knew it was a thing you wanted. But some people see this as some kind of delusion that we're under, or a thing that we made up, and they feel the need to try and fix it through coercion into sex, or even worse, corrective rape. In an asexual community census taken in 2015, of around 8,000 ace people asked, 43.5% reported sexual violence, ranging from coercion to sex to rape. The idea that having any sexual experience at all will somehow cure ace people is pretty disgusting, and never doubt that it does escalate as far as assault. And if this were to be done to an allosexual person, say, if a straight man pressured a lesbian into sex because he believed that her having sex with a man would make her realise that that was what she wanted all along, we would rightly consider that to be disgusting, bigoted and ignorant. And we should view it in exactly the same terms when someone is trying to fix ace people. And I cannot say it loud enough. We do not need to be fixed. We are not broken. We're just not that interested in sex. And that's not weird. Well, whatever you choose to be. It's not a choice. 
it's not celibacy. It's it's just who I am. Maybe you haven't met the right person yet. Okay, can we just talk about this phrase for a second? One of the most common responses that you'll hear when you tell people your ace is the phrase, maybe you haven't met the right person yet. Again, assuming that we don't know what we want, that we're immature or not ready. Maybe we haven't met the right person yet. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to fuck a cactus? No. Well, maybe you haven't met the right cactus yet. I mean, I really think that you should go and stick your dick in a cactus so that you know for sure whether or not you want to fuck a cactus. You see how stupid that sounds? Of course you don't want to fuck a cactus. Probably. But imagine having people regularly telling you that you should definitely try fucking a cactus. I mean, you should take that cactus and just shove it right up your vag. I mean, that's what normal people do. Normal people want to fuck cactuses. So why don't you want to fuck cactuses? Cacti. This is the essence of what it's like being ace. People regularly telling you that you aren't valid because you aren't the same as them. And that sucks. I would like for my sexual orientation to be more widely understood and recognized. So maybe if someone tells you that they're ace, the correct response should just be... Okay. I have known that I'm asexual for just under two years. It's been a liberating thing getting to know myself better like this. But I'm still not an asexual YouTuber. I'm an asexual person who puts videos on YouTube, but... This is not what my content is. And don't worry, I'll go back to talking about movies soon. I still have a lot to learn about being ace. Hell, I learned a lot just writing this video. The good news is, this is something I live with for my whole life. So, I've got plenty of time to keep learning. Which brings me to something of a plug. If you go to Unbound.com, you can find a book project there called End of the Pursuit. Asexuality, Abromantism, and Agender Identity by Michael Paramo. It's a cool resource that is looking to help people learn all about asexuality. I have no personal involvement in it other than I pledged some money to it myself. It's just a thing that I would like to see exist. So go check that out. There's a link in the etc. and you'll also find down there the sources that I used while writing this video. Yay research! Asexuality is often referred to as the invisible orientation because we so easily sink into the background and I don't think that needs to be the case. If there were more people out there talking about us, then it would be so much easier for us to be seen. If there had been this kind of information out there when I was younger, then maybe I wouldn't have spent a quarter of a century thinking that I was straight. Things can get better, and if we put in the effort, they will get better. But we need to be vocal and visible. In short, we need to be proud. So I actually hung this slightly too high on the wall. So um, I've been standing on a stool for this whole video. <laughs> Movie magic. you want to say anything about ace people? Frank says support ace people. He also says trans rights, because he's a good boy. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's very different to anything I've ever made before, but I felt it was an important enough topic that I had to try and take that risk. If you'd like to see more videos by me, then click up here to subscribe. Click up here to watch my video about Pan. Special thanks to Laura Crone for providing voices for this episode. If you click down here, you can find her video, I'm Nobody, which is absolutely fantastic, and you should check it out.